going on YouTube? Welcome back to Acura Audio Garage. Today I have another video for you on the TSX. So 05 TSX, this is gonna apply if you have an 04, 05, 06, 07, 08. Um, we're gonna be replacing the front speakers. So that's gonna include our woofer here and our tweeter up here. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's relatively simple with our accessories. So here we have we have some pioneers that are going in the door. Remember, your speakers in your TSX are gonna be four ohms. I'll show you that in a second. Um, have our adapter uh, speaker spaces here. It's gonna make installation a lot simpler. And our speaker harnesses and our tweeter harnesses. Really, just make sure we have the easiest, uh, most accommodating DIY experience for you. You can get it done without this stuff here. Um, it's just gonna be a little trickier. You might have to cut the door or make some custom mounts and then you're gonna cut factory wiring. So I don't suggest you do that. You can just use the accessories right here and you can find that on our website. Just gonna break down what's gonna happen in the video real quick. Um, gonna go over the speakers. I'm gonna go over the speakers, unbox those. We're gonna go over the disassembly assembly procedure. We're gonna go over the installation procedure. Then in the end, we're actually gonna go into our plug and play amp. So we're working on the video for that as well. Um, but this is for the speaker installation. I just want to break it down to you So if you're skipping around time stamps, you know kind of where to jump to depending on what you're looking at and then also Testing out some hoodies for some Acura Audio Garage swag. So if you're interested um, Just be the logo Right, I don't know. I, it would just be the logo on some hoodies some good quality hoodies though I don't like cheap stuff some really thick stuff up here in New York. It gets cold So thinking about doing some shirts, maybe I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about it and we'll go from there. All right, so these are Pioneer's um, installer speakers, I would call them. They're very installer friendly. They really thought about everything you need. They come with their own speaker adapter. Um, not necessarily like this one where it'll match up with the factory, but if you're down to drill some holes, you can uh, definitely just use the adapters that come with the Pioneer's. And they come with separate tweeters. So uh, let me just show it to you. So you can see we have a little tweeter there. The best way to get these things out of the box is to just kind of slide them upside down like that. And then there's hardware up here, so if you want to leave them on the table like this is how you're going to get the best experience without all the stuff falling out. So here we go. Let me actually show you them. So here at the top we have our tweeter enclosure, our crossovers. Our tweeters are actually here on the sides, so this will just slide off. And the adapters for these are actually <laughs> missing, but they do come with speaker spacers and I'll show you kind of what they look like. So this is the spacer that will normally come with this Pioneer speaker. As you can see, you can kind of cut it. Um, it has like edges where you can take a flush cutter and cut around it. The only thing is it's not necessarily thick enough to really put the speaker far out enough. But if you're in a tight spot and you're trying to get this done, these and you bought these Pioneer speakers, these can work. You just have to kind of figure out which holes line up with what proper holes to mount your speaker uh, but if you just want the easiest time I just recommend these they are gonna put the speaker at the right length away so it won't get in the way of the window coming up and down and it won't touch the door panel all right guys so let's take a look at these speakers so you can see they're 80 watts RMS 4 ohms they have their little protective coil here Real nice looking speakers. And then we have the Pioneer tweeter. So this is the, a bigger tweeter than the Infinity tweeter. We carry, we also carry the Infinity speakers. Um, this is a little bit bigger of a tweeter, but it worked just fine. And then here are the base blocking uh, crossovers. Here's their base blocking cro crossover. So this would go up to your tweeter, but you can kind of just eliminate that with our tweeter harness adapter we use the same kind of uh, capacitor that they do and just allows you to um, kind of eliminate that wire and what I mean by that is you would plug your tweeter straight into our tweeter harness so I'll demonstrate that better on video later but these would plug into here and then your actual speakers um, you would use the speaker harness for so you would throw one end here the other end here and then just plug them in on your factory system you don't have to worry that these are going to blow out or play really low because that factory amplifier isn't going to push a ton of bass to these if you're doing an aftermarket system then 
and you're going to follow our installation procedure without the cro dedicated crossover, just remember to uh, cross these over at the appropriate um, low pass, I mean high pass filter. So yeah, these are me meant to play down. So when you're installing these and you're not using a factory amplifier, you're going to use an aftermarket amplifier. You just want to make sure you set your crossover to maybe 50, 60 hertz. They say they can play down to 34 hertz. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But just to be safe and protect your speakers. They also have a coil here to help them not play as low. But it's up to you how you want to handle it. If with the factory amplifier or the plug and play amp that we're going to demo later, you're safe to do the installation how we're going to do it. All right, guys, so here we're just going to test the impedance of the factory speaker. So you can see this speaker is gone. Just like the rear speaker has the same connector and the same mounting mechanism, at some point the speaker must have broken or been replaced, and they just decided to put some rivets in it. Um, so we had to drill those out, and here's our speaker. As you can see, it's gone. This is probably what the speaker, this is probably what the speakers in your TSX look like, probably all ripped apart, so you might want to think about replacing them. But anyways, we're just going to test the resistance or impedance so here we have some part numbers but no impedance value and then our tweeter actually does have an impedance value with a part number so to check your impedance or resistance all you're going to do is just take your multimeter set it to resistance put it on your speaker terminals and wait so you can see 3.9 it went to 4.0 it's a 4 ohm, true 4 ohm. And then on the tweeter, it's gonna be a little bit tougher. Yeah, I can't film this. I can't film this and test the impedance, but it's 4 ohms. I got it off camera. I just take my <laughs> word on it. Um, so we're good to replace both of these with our Pioneer variants. So I'm gonna get started on that process. I'm gonna show you how the factory door panel comes off, what screws you need to take out, what to look for as you're removing the door panel, and then finally the installation of the speaker. A quick tip, unlike on the TL, with the TSX, you do have room here in the boot. So on the TL, right here in this boot, is the actual connector into the door. I'm gonna try my best to show you in the TSX, there's actually just wire. So because there's just wire, you can run your own wiring into the door if you needed to. If you're doing over 120 watts RMS or a very high-end set of component speakers, then that would make sense. If your speakers are around 80 watts, 60 watts, or they're loud speakers, um, you don't necessarily need to run new wiring. You're good using the factory wiring. So that's just a quick tip. I know people are gonna ask. We're not doing our installation that way, but it is possible. To take off the door panel, you're gonna have a uh, two screws right here behind this panel. You're gonna stick your little uh, tool, little pick tool in here, and then you're gonna pull towards you. There's a cover here, revealing one screw. And then we're gonna pop this up and we should have two more screws securing it somewhere. On the opposite side is very similar. Just the door handle cover is gonna house the two screws instead of the two screws in here. But all right, I'm gonna pop some of those covers off and I'll show you exactly where all the screws are. All right guys, so removing uh, this little door panel again on the side here, you'll release what's inside that little hole and then pull it towards this side like you're opening a door two screws and you have your one screw down here here you're gonna start prying up on this edge keep prying up keep prying up then this whole panel will come off now we just need to disconnect it disconnecting it is pretty simple it's just a couple of push tabs so as you can see where I put my finger you're gonna just push down on there it's gonna release you're gonna push down on here it'll release and then you'll pull them out that appears to be all our screws one two three there are none underneath so I'm gonna get those out and start pulling. All right guys, so after you get those screws loose, disconnect, you can now begin prying at the bottom. I'm gonna warn you now, it's very tight. So you're gonna take your pry tool, you're gonna go on this side, start this edge first, continue working down. And now it's loose enough for me to come up and over the top. You only have to watch for the latch cable for this. Since this is up and down, 
it locks here and there it won't come off the door and then this cable for the light is also inserted into the door panel to release this cable it's very simple it's just you're gonna unhook it and then pull up and i'll show you that right now so here is the door latch cable i was referring to you want to be careful it's very easy to break these you're going to pop it off and then there's going to be a clip over the top of this you're just going to remove that then the last thing is this clip is inside the door panel you're going to pull it out with your panel removal tool and then this is going to twist out kind of like your headlights do you're going to twist it and then you should be able to remove it from the door so here is your standard honda clip connector that's where that black piece goes this black piece right here so you're going to pull it towards you it should loosen it and then this clip is going to be over the cable so you're just going to see that it has an edge and lift up and over the cable and then here is the connect uh, the location where that little light screws into so then after that to actually remove the speaker is pretty simple you're just going to take your pry tool and pry it away from the door what's holding it on is there is a tab up here that you, what the, there you go but there's a tab up there that you would press down upon and it should release the speaker forward and now what you'll do is you'll lift up up towards you sorry it's one it's hard with one hand and then once you lift up towards you you can disconnect the speaker all you have to do is just pinch these two together and i'll disconnect your speaker again it here are the hooks so it hooks into the door like that and then this tab right here is what holds it against the door panel so we're going to replace this speaker with the same pioneer i'll show you the procedure for that all right guys when using our adapter to mount the speaker you're going to receive three screws and three inserts. So your inserts are where it's gonna go in first. So those three inserts that came with the adapter, you're gonna insert into these holes. So the hole above that big hole, the other hole above that big hole, and then up here. So these are gonna be snug. This one's gonna be able to slide around, but that's not a big deal. We're gonna secure that in a second. Um, you're no longer gonna use these holes, so I'm just giving you a heads up. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to mount the speaker spacer on top. In order to do that, you're going to pre-drill these holes with the screws provided. So as you can see, that screw's already poking out some. You want to get all of them started in this method, and then you're going to screw them into the actual spots next. So now that all three are poking above the surface, like so, you want to line them up with the actual hole. And then you're just going to take your screwdriver and start screwing them in. So once you have screwed them in, you're going to have your adapter held in there really firmly. And you're ready to secure your speaker on top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the speaker, mount it, connect it, and then mount it onto the mounting spacer slash adapter. So along with the long screws, you'll get four short screws, and that's what you're gonna use to secure the speaker to the adapter. So you, as you can see, I have now connected my speaker harness, so then I can connect these straight to my aftermarket speaker. So after we plugged in our speaker harness, you can see it plugs right in. Your big tab is going, or your big terminal is going to the positive side, and your smaller terminal is going to the negative side, and that's just standard aftermarket setup here it is speaker all mounted so we use our harness to connect to the factory speaker connector then gives us two terminals to connect straight to the speaker and then our speaker spacer really makes installation easy you can see the four holes line up real easy and then those three other holes line up uh, with the factory mounting locations so these the adapters and the harness really make this installation a lot simpler again if you needed to run your own wire to the door if you want to cut it, do it without these, it's possible. Fitting a six and a half in there is gonna be hard. You're probably gonna to need to go with five and a quarter unless you wanna cut the door or use some kind of spacer or adapter. All right guys, so now we're gonna 
we have our speaker installed we're going to put our door panel back the first thing we're going to secure when we put our door panel back is this light and then this insert then we'll push our harnesses through and then the last thing is going to be the hooking of the door latch cable and you just want to make sure that when you actually slide the door panel on you clear back over this uh locking mechanism all right um we slid the door panel over this cover all our screws line up which that's a good sign the screw here and we're going to reattach the control switch and then just make sure that it is flush along the bottom so that your panel goes on properly when you close i mean so your door closes properly when you attempt to close it completed both doors we're going to install our tweeters just remember on this door you do have two extra screws behind this panel that you want to take care of but back to our tweeters so our tweeters just held in with pressure so we're going to take a tool like this and we're going to nudge one of the edges up i'm going to come in here like so be careful because your dash is delicate just kind of want to insert and you can see it's starting to lift up and then i'm going to start rotating and that should free it then it's going to have a little black connector you're just going to press the tab to disconnect it this tweeter is actually broken so we don't even have the connector here we're going to have to figure something out for this yeah you can see both factory speakers were just completely destroyed so again guys if you're thinking your speakers sound fine um you might want to double check there might be blown just like this but all right um here's the factory tweeter housing here's one of our factory tweeters what we're going to do is figure out a way to mount our Pioneer tweeter in there. I think we're just going to use a plastic welder on each side. You could use Velcro, you could use um, some sort of glue. It's really up to you how you want to secure them. Alright guys, so we're actually going to use Velcro to secure our tweeters. And it's just so that anyone who attempts to do this can do this. You're just going to take some Velcro and cut it down to the length of these circumference and then insert your tweeter so i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about here it is done as you can see there's velcro on there's basically velcro stuck to the inside of the tweeter housing and then to the outside of the tweeter and then together they hold this tweeter crap whoops together they hold this tweeter in place so i'm just going to do the same for the other i'm just going to take velcro about this thick uh stick it to my tweeter, the housing, stick it to my tweeter, the housing, kind of wrap it around like this and it'll hold it in place. All right guys, so they're both secured with Velcro now. If the Velcro seems a little ghetto to you, um, I completely understand. You can use another method, but this is just, I want to be able to showcase a method that anyone can use to properly mount their tweeter. And you can see it's right in the right spot. Um, you could use against a plastic welder, super glue, whatever you want to. This is just a simple, fast, easy method that anyone can do. And it's gonna hold, as the temperature fluctuates hot and cold, the Velcro might start to kind of get weaker, but we'll monitor it. We're close with this customer and he understands um, this is kind of like a first time product for us. So he's willing to work with us. If you're a shop doing this for a customer, I'm sure you have a way to do it. If you're doing it for yourself, if the Velcro wears out, you can just replace it. So it's not really a big deal. Our tweeters are mounted in their housing. Now we're hooking it up to our tweeter harnesses. Our tweeter harnesses normally come with these terminals, but because they're designed to work with Infinity speakers and JBL speakers, the Pioneers have a different um, tab termination. So what we just did is we just cut them off, cut the terminals off, wired them together. We're gonna use these easy connects. Uh, basically, you twist your wire together, you slide this over to once, you slide this onto your wire, you twist them together like so. So they're twisted together in a straight line. Then you can slide this back over them and then you just hit them with heat from a lighter, etc. And it's gonna melt the solder in the middle I'm trying to capture it on camera so as you can see the solder begin melting so now that connection soldered together and then um, it has heat shrink on the end so once you heat the ends up it heat shrinks itself to the wire so it's waterproof these are really great highly recommend them we don't sell them you can get them on Amazon if you really need them reach out and we'll send you some but they're really great for quick little things like this all right, so now our connections are made. If you're following this video step by step, then the Pioneer has a black 
with the white. The white is the positive. The way you can tell that's on the back of the tweeter, there's actually a plus sign where the white, uh, the black with white stripe uh, terminates. So I'm just gonna get the other tweeter ready and then we'll go mount them in the car. All right guys, so we're finally ready to install our tweeter. As you can see, here it is in that um, housing. Here is our connection. We're just gonna plug this into the car and then seat the tweeter where it needs to go. To disconnect the old tweeter, just has a connector on the edges. I know it's kind of hard to see, but right here it just has a tab at the top. You just pull that away, and there you go. Here's the harness. Our harness is going to plug right into that one. There you go. Now our harness is plugged straight into the OEM. You can now just insert all the extra wire into that location and then just mount your tweeter back here but this tab right here is going to go towards you and then it'll sit flushly there you go tweeter's back in like we never took it out and i'm just going to take this factory tweeter with us the other tweeter is already in as well so now we're just going to listen to the entire audio system see how it sounds with those upgraded front speakers Oh, it's the champagne part. Big. I don't know if you could hear that bass. You could definitely feel it. This is worth the upgrade, guys. So if you're looking for the Pioneer speakers, they are listed on our store with this kit. You can use the JBL speakers, whatever speakers you want. Those tweeters, you can really hear them. Um, they really pop. It sounds really good. And then the door speakers um, really hit that bass. Like it sounds so much better than it did with those crappy shot speakers. If you sticked around long enough, we're now, right, guys, this upgrade, this upgrade is definitely worth it, especially if you have the factory speakers. Even with the factory audio system, those pioneers really sound really great. You really hear the bass response in the door. The tweeter is like really bright, but like a good bright, like you really, it just an overall worth it upgrade from that crappy factory speaker. So highly recommend it you saw it's pretty easy to do um you could do it yourself everything we have everything on our website it's going to be listed i'll throw the link down in the description i really recommend this upgrade um i just can't say enough about it i can't wait till the customer listens to it and just to see how happy is it he is but all right guys if you stuck around this long make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe and now we're going to show you a demo of the plug and play amp so i'm going to disassemble this quick and then we're going to plug that amp in see what it sounds like but uh if you're signing off you don't want to stick around for plug and play amp again just like the video subscribe thanks for watching so our plug and play amp for the tsx is going to be a four channel amp we're still deciding on the exact model but here you have your factory amp um we disabled you know disassembled all this to get there those two plugs here are two plugs we're gonna plug them in i just want to let you know that the four channel amp um probably the only one that's going to be plug and play the other ones are going to require you to run power to the battery the way the four channel amp works sorry to keep shining light at you the way the four channel amp works is you're going to have your tweeter and your front door speaker on your left and right side be your front channels so front left front right then your rear speaker so that sub your rear door speaker and then that other rear speaker and your other door speaker are going to be um, channels three and four so there's going to be uh, two speakers on each channel so um, we're going to be running this at two ohms that can support it we're going to see how it sounds all right so there we are we're plugged in our uh, amp is on and now let's Okay, so that's way louder than the factory amp. I don't want to say twice as loud, but definitely way louder. I'm going to tune the amp some and change the song. We'll see how it sounds. But so far, good results. Not heating up, not clipping, nothing. You really feel the bass with the amp. And just to give you guys notice, all the speakers in this car are aftermarket. So if you're doing this with your factory speakers, um, it's a possibility it'll support them. I don't know how good it'll sound 
um, with them. We haven't had a chance to test it, but with the aftermarket speakers, we have aftermarket six by nines. We have um, other speakers that are aftermarket here and uh, the rear doors. And then you saw, we just did the Pioneers. So we got Pioneers, Kenwoods and Kenwoods. And um, it just, the bass is crazy. <laughs> You get a lot more volume out of this amp, but it does um, start distorting around 36, 37. You can turn the gains down and kind of settle it up, but I feel like this is a sweet spot. <laughs> But all right, guys, if you stuck around this long, um, I don't know what to tell you. So I'm excited. This is going to be a great upgrade for your TSX. Those speakers sound so much better. 